Good morning, everyone. It's a chilly morning here at about 9,600 feet in the Bighorn Mountains of north central Wyoming. I'm hiking along this mile and a half long dirt road to my first destination of the day. This is kind of a, an under the radar mountain range. It's not super famous, doesn't have the, the glory of the of the Tetons or the Sierras or anything like that. But it's a relatively high mountain range. I think the highest peak is 13,000 feet. It's one of Wyoming's 30 something, 13,000 foot peaks. I'm not gonna be visiting that part of this mountain range on this trip. Right now I'm in the far northern end of the range. I'm gonna be crossing the northern end, gonna be driving along the eastern side and then crossing the southern end end so i won't be penetrating that middle section here on this trip and here we are we have arrived at our destination this is the bighorn medicine wheel this is a native american construction that's at least a few hundred years old potentially up to seven or eight hundred years old but native americans have been in this area for ten thousand years this sign here shows what it looks like from above so there's this central hub with 28 spokes radiating from it and several cairns, several piles along the perimeter here. So medicine wheels were built by Native Americans for several different purposes. There were places of, of healing, of vision quests, just of spiritual importance in general. And some of them, like this one, were also built with an astronomical component. So apparently on the summer solstice, certain parts of this line up with the sun to point at the summer solstice. So it was used as a, as a astronomical timekeeper, sort of. Here's a better look at it from the side. We've got the central hub with the spokes radiating out and then the cairns on the outside. This is the first certifiably authentic medicine wheel I've been to. I've been to one in southern Utah that's of dubious provenance. And this is really, really great. Drones are not allowed here, understandably, I think. This is a place that is still sacred to Native Americans. Plus it's a, what is it, a national, national landmark of some sort. So it has federal protection and also it's, it's still held sacred by Native tribes today. So I understand I'm okay with not flying the drone here. There are multiple medicine wheels scattered across the American West. There's one in Colorado that I want to visit sometime in the next year or two. There are a couple of, of pretty prominent ones in Canada, in Alberta and Saskatchewan. But this one I think is the most famous and one of the best preserved. And now after about half an hour of dirt road driving later, I'm on the trail, I'm hiking through the beautiful forest here. My destination is about two miles away. I don't think it's an especially difficult hike, but I'm really excited about the payoff at the end. Also, somehow between the medicine wheel parking area and where I just parked the trailhead here, I lost my fleece jacket. I have no idea where it is. I stopped a couple times between there and here, and at some point when I opened the door, it must have just fallen out without me realizing, so that's unfortunate. Maybe I'll find it on the way back. Guess we'll see. After about 50 minutes of hiking and a little over two and a half miles, I'm at the destination. I now present to you Bucking Mule Falls. It's down in the bottom of this really deep chasm here. That might be one of the more spectacularly situated waterfalls I've ever seen. As far as I know, there's no easy way to get down to the bottom here to get a super close look at the trail or at the waterfall, because I mean, there's no trail going down in here. That's insanely steep. What a place. I wanted to fly the drone to get a closer look down in there, but I'm getting a cannot take off message in the top left corner here. Not sure what the deal is there, but 
I guess it's just as well. I'd probably crash it against a cliff down there or fly it too close to the bottom and lose a signal or something, but that is a spectacular waterfall, even from afar. So on the road to that other waterfall, the one I was just at, you pass by the trailhead for a different waterfall. And I decided to come down to the bottom of that waterfall. It's a shorter hike. It's called Porcupine Falls, or maybe Porcupine Creek Falls. It was about a 10 minute hike. Very steep, very steep hike down into the canyon. But there are lots of, lots of steps to make it a little bit easier. Check out this gorgeous waterfall though. And yeah, I just looked at my map and it is called Porcupine Falls. It's a giant pool down here. Apparently this is a popular swimming hole in warmer times, warmer temperatures. I can see why. It's not especially warm right now though. But here is the star. That is Porcupine Falls. Gorgeous. Waterfalls are great from afar, but they're even better up close. guys can you stick with me here for one more waterfall today i know we've been seeing a lot of waterfalls but i love waterfalls and they've all been different and i think this third one will also be very different this is just some beautiful country up here wide open spaces scattered rock formations high mountains i love it Another car just pulled in as soon as I started hiking, so I'm gonna hike quickly. I'm not gonna film too much. I wanna get there and have a good amount of time there by myself before the other people show up. So I'm not gonna film a whole lot going down to, to the spot. Also, as I started, a couple of guys were coming back, returning to the trailhead, and they said that there's a, a mama moose and a baby moose down here, so I'm gonna try to be quiet and hopefully we can see them. If not, oh, if not, at least the waterfall should still be worth the trip. Oh yeah, I almost ran right into her. Can you see her through the trees there? Moose are such strange looking animals. Let's see if I can get a better view for you guys. Oh, there she goes. That was great. I think it's probably the closest I've ever been to a moose. I mean, it couldn't have been more than 20 feet from me. Gotta check over my shoulder to make sure it's not trying to lull me into a false sense of security before attacking, but I think, I think I'm in the clear. Okay, I think the end of the trail is imminent here. Got some gorgeous little pools. And then just, incredibly steep, austere looking cliffs. But I think there's one final plunge over here. And I think this is one of the, the couple of, of deeper plunge pools here. Look at that. I think the second one is right there. Yeah, this is the lowermost plunge pool. And from here, the creek is funneled into this literally one foot wide channel here. Gotta watch my step. And then there's a final 
final little waterfall. And fantastic views of the canyon below. Incredible. And I just realized while looking out here from that bottommost pothole that there's another little waterfall in this cleft out here. You probably won't be able to see it in the shadows there. There's a little trickle of water back in there. Okay, I just saw a bull moose. On the way out here, the bull is right here. And then there's another one over here that I haven't gotten a good look at yet, but I, I know there is another one over there. I wish I had a longer zoom lens on this camera. I'm sorry I don't. I'm out of the mountains now. I'm in a town called Sheridan. Decently sized town, like there's a Walmart and a bunch of restaurants and everything like that. I decided to go to a Mexican food bus for dinner. And I got a fajita burrito. Never heard of such a thing, but I like fajitas and I like burritos, so decided to give it a shot. That burrito was incredible. That was so good. I'm full and happy, and I've driven about 20 minutes south of Sheridan now. I'm on my way back into the mountains. I'm slowly getting there, but I'm going kind of parallel to the mountains. I'll, I'll kind of show you a map later on to explain to you what I've been doing today and where I've been going. 20 minutes south of town, I'm at the site of a, depending on what you want to call it, a massacre or a battle, basically similar in nature to the Battle of Little Bighorn, where Custer and his men were killed by a by a much larger Native American force. This happened 10 years before the Battle of Little Bighorn. It says, let me read you this sign here. On this field on the 21st day of December, 1866, three commissioned officers and 76 privates of the 18th US Infantry and of the 2nd US Cavalry and four civilians under the command of Captain Brevet Lieutenant Colonel William J. Fetterman were killed by an overwhelming force of Sioux under the command of Red Cloud. There were no survivors. So as I understand it, those American military troops were stationed in a fort near here, and they were protecting immigrants on the Bozeman Trail, which was an offshoot of the Oregon Trail that connected the Oregon Trail here in Wyoming to southwestern Montana, where there were newly discovered gold fields. The guy who was in charge of those 70-whatever troops Fetterman, this by the way is called the Fetterman Battle or the Fetterman Massacre. He was a Civil War veteran, but he didn't have any, any experience fighting Native Americans. And so he was stationed at that fort with his troops that he was commanding, and they were drawn out by a Native American, by a smaller Native American party, and they went up and over a ridge. And on the other side of that ridge, I think this is how it went, that there were like a thousand Native American warriors who basically just surrounded and killed the entire U.S. Army detachment. It is getting late in the day. It's 6.30. It's going to be dark in an hour and a half. 
and I still have about 40 minutes or an hour of driving to do to get to where I want to camp tonight. So I can hit the road. The plan is to go drive up a canyon, a canyon that looks really cool. So I'll start filming again as soon as I start driving through that canyon. I have to stop and just show you guys this canyon. It is crazy, which is fitting because this is called Crazy Woman Canyon. Look at that beautiful creek down in there. I mean, there are these just like house sized boulders covering sections of the creek. I would stop and explore this area more, but it's getting dark fast and I need to find a campsite. I'm gonna try to camp somewhere either in this canyon or just above it as soon as I can find a decent campsite. And then tomorrow I'll come back down through here and fly the drone through this canyon and explore it a little bit more. So I've found a campsite. It's a nice spot back in the trees over here. That's right across the road from the creek. Crazy Woman Creek. And then over at the campsite itself we have a little fire ring, a giant pile of ashes, and just quite a bit of space. Like there's a big spot right here. And I'm parked on the flattest spot. It's not especially flat. There's more space back in here, but this isn't especially flat. Overall, looks like a great little spot. And I'll see you guys in the morning. Good morning. Got a few things I want to mention today before we get back into the canyon. First of all, I found my fleece jacket. It was on the far side of my my fridge. Let me show you. I guess I had put it on top of the fridge and then while I was driving, it had fallen over to the other side and so Took me a while to find it, to realize it was there, but eventually got it. And then on this trip, I've been using my laptop more for video editing and for backing up footage. And I needed some kind of desk. And so I grabbed a shelf from an old bookshelf that we have. And I use it essentially as a lap desk. So I'll be sitting with my back up here and I can have this on my lap and it's big enough for my laptop and mouse and my hard drive that I'm backing up to. And also when I need the laptop on and doing something, but I don't necessarily need it on my lap, I can put it there on top of the fridge. So again, for example, when I am copying footage from multiple SD cards onto a hard drive, it can take, you know, five, 10, 15 minutes to do that. I can just set it over there. It's out of the way, but I can still access it if I need to. Just wanted to show you that. That's something I haven't done before. And again, that's just a, a shelf from a Walmart bookshelf, but of course you can buy specially made lap desks. But yeah, that's working well for me on this trip. And then I kept saying I was gonna show you what I was doing, like where I was going, where I was driving yesterday. So imagine this rectangle is Wyoming. Wyoming is a rectangle, so it shouldn't be too much of a stretch. These are the Bighorn Mountains. That's the mountain range that, I, that I'm in right now and that I was exploring all of yesterday. So I started the day kind of on the, oops, on the west side of the northern part of the mountains. And most of what I did yesterday was all up in this northern part. And then I left the mountains and went to the east side. That's where Sheridan was. That's where I got gas and I got that burrito. And that's where the, the Fetterman Massacre Monument was. It was like over here. And I kept driving south to about here, and then I started coming back into the mountains, and that's where I am now. This canyon is on the east side of the southern end of the mountains there. And the ideal plan for yesterday was to keep driving west, to keep, to keep driving through this canyon, and then up into the, the highest part of this, this southern end of the mountains, and then out the west side. 
through a canyon called Ten Sleep Canyon. But of course the lack of daylight got the better of me yesterday so I stopped here on the eastern side of the southern end of the mountains. And today's going to be kind of a, a rest day for me in the sense that I'm not going to be filming SUV RVing videos today. I'm going to be fishing a little bit and filming some fishing videos. And then I have six hours to drive to my next destination, to the next mountain range, the third of the three Wyoming mountain ranges that I wanted to explore on this trip. But that coverage will be in the next video. My plan now is to drive back down the canyon, film that a little bit more, and then I might show you a little bit of footage when I'm driving out Ten Sleep Canyon on the west side of the mountains later if I have good footage to show you. So let's head back down the canyon and fly the drone around. What a cool place, what a unique canyon. I'm gonna end this part here. I'll meet back up with you later when I'm driving down the, through over the other side of the mountains there through Ten Sleep Canyon, if there's anything interesting to show you. Well guys, I made it down into Ten Sleep Canyon. It's a beautiful, beautiful canyon. I already flew the drone. I'll show that footage after I get done talking here, but uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I had a really great time. What a beautiful place. Obviously, I just scratched the surface of the Bighorn Mountains. Even the places that I did visit, I didn't spend a whole lot of time in them. And then, as I said earlier, there's the entire central part of the range, the wilderness that is the highest and most spectacular part of the range that I didn't even go to. So there's definitely stuff here to come back for, and I hope you guys enjoyed what I did see. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any questions. I will now play the drone footage and also any footage of driving out of the canyon. I'll see you guys in the next one. Be sure to check out Adventure Know How, my new site, where you can gain access to a map of all of my free campsites, plus monthly bonus videos that you won't find anywhere else. Learn more at adventureknowhow.com. And for links to everything else SUV RVing related, visit suvrving.com. Links to these sites and more will be in the video description.